Good morning. On this second Sunday of Epiphany, we meet together in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and in sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so let us now listen to our words from Holy Scripture. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were, were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli. He said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, or and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said, Samuel, go and lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went down and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Revelation. I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll written on the inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or in earth or un under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. 
and I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or look into it. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders a lamb standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, incense, which are the prayers of the saints. They sing a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slaughtered, and by your blood and you ransomed for God's saints from every tribe and language and people and nations. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign on earth. This is the word of the Lord. Anointed great David's greater son, hail in the time appointed, his reign on earth begun. He comes to break oppression, to set the captive free. To take away transgression and rule in equity. He comes with succor speedy to those who suffer wrong. To help the poor and needy, and bid the weak be strong. To give them songs for sighing, their darkness turn to light. Whose souls condemned and dying were precious in his sight. He shall come down like showers upon the fruitful earth, and love, joy, hope like flowers spring in his path to birth. Before him on the mountains shall peace the herald go. And righteousness in fountains from hill to valley flow. Kings shall bow down before him and gold and incense bring. All nations shall adore him. His praise all people sing. To him shall prayer unceasing and daily vows ascend. His kingdom still increasing, a kingdom without The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. 
Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip frowned Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. This Sunday we journey on rapidly in our Gospel readings from the baptism of Jesus last week to now the call of his first disciples. All four Gospel writers give account of Jesus calling men to follow him and it's clear that Jesus by this stage has already had some public ministry. He's known in the region as a teacher with great authority, a miracle worker with astonishing authority and now we see his authority at work as he calls young men to leave their livelihoods and become his apprentices learning the way of the kingdom. There's an excitement in our passage as Jesus is becoming known more widely and as he calls people to himself we see those people drawing other people to come and see what this rabbi is all about. Come and see says Philip to Nathaniel in verse 46 of John 1. Come and see. Philip is one of the first evangelists in the Gospels. So I'm going to speak this morning about evangelism. It's a word sadly laden with negative overtones much of the time. Those of you who watch the cartoon called The Simpsons will know the character of Ned Flanders. He's the archetype Christian evangelist, devout and sincere with bad facial hair, systematically destroying relationships with his neighbours through totally inappropriate faith sharing. But in recent years, in the secular job market, evangelism has become the buzzword. Companies are falling over each other to hire marketing evangelists, digital evangelists, brand evangelists. And the reason is obvious. Everyone is trying to get in on the business of word of mouth marketing, especially with new social media. The best thing you can possibly do as a company is to get your customers to tell their own friends about your brand. There is nothing more persuasive and effective than friends telling their own friends that they tried something and found it was great. Modern companies may now be in on this, but it was God's idea from the beginning. So I want to encourage you this morning, no matter how long or short a time you might have been a follower of Jesus, please consider your call to be an evangelist. Let's look at the passage, John 1 verse 43. If you've uh, got a Bible you can have open in front of you, that would be really helpful. Jesus calls people to follow him, who in turn go and find people to follow him. So our reading, uh, verse 43, it begins with a man called Philip. Uh, Jesus already has two out of his 12 disciples. He's already got Andrew and Simon Peter and they're from Bethsaida. The third disciple is Philip. Uh, he's not a random stranger. He's also from Andrew and Simon Peter's hometown, Bethsaida. It's not a coincidence. What Philip receives is encounter transformational encounter. Philip meets Jesus face to face and hears that personal authoritative call on his life and because of that encounter Philip reaches the same incredible conviction as his two friends from his hometown. This man Jesus is God's king. He's the one we've all been waiting for. He's the one the prophets told us about. He's going to bring God's kingdom and this is such good and exciting news. Philip 
automatically wants to tell others about Jesus. And he doesn't know very much. He just believes that God's promised saviour is here and it's enough. It's enough for him to head off and find his friend Nathaniel. Philip says to Nathaniel, we have found the one. That word found in the Greek, I expect you know it, it's the word eureka, a great exciting sense of discovery. Jesus is Philip's eureka. We have found God's promised saviour. Nathaniel, this is great news. He is Jesus of Nazareth. And Philip's friend Nathaniel is not very impressed with Philip's enthusiasm. Nathaniel has doubts. Nathaniel is a sceptic. At this point, I wonder whether the passage rings true for your experience. I hope you know what it is to encounter Jesus, who is alive today by his spirit. I hope you've heard his personal authoritative call over your life. I hope you've discovered him as your Eureka, the fulfilment of all God's promises. And then perhaps you've tried to share your discovery with a non-Christian friend and found that your friend is rather sceptical. Most people are very sceptical. And like Nathaniel, most people's objections are entirely reasonable. So what's Nathaniel's problem? Philip says, we have found Jesus of Nazareth. And Nathaniel replies, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nazareth was a town with a really dud reputation. People from Nazareth were looked down on by everyone else. The Nazarenes were the butt of jokes. And I've got a lot of sympathy with this because I was born and raised in Essex, which doesn't always inspire people's confidence. When I was a teenager, I really wanted to get into Cambridge University. So I applied and I thought I had everything I needed. I've got the grades and the music and the sport and the community service. And they called me for interview and I was very nervous. Neither of my parents had been to university, so it was this big aspiration. And I showed up and I, I waited nervously outside and the man called me into his wood panelled study and he looked across at me and before I had a chance to sit down he said, so you're an Essex girl are you? Every country has its dud bit and Nazareth was the Essex of Judea. Nathaniel's question is a good one. Nazareth, how could the Messiah possibly be from a town with no status? And Philip's response is brilliant because he doesn't actually even try to answer the question. He says to his friend, come and see, come and meet him. You have to see for yourself, make up your own mind. This invitation to others to encounter Jesus Christ is the very best evangelism we can do. Come and encounter him for yourself. That's the invitation. That's what we have to offer the world. Philip doesn't sit down with his friend and explain everything there is to know about the Old Testament and how well Jesus was from a royal city of David because he was born in Bethlehem. He could have done that, but we're not trying to answer everyone's questions perfectly. Becoming a Christian is not about understanding everything and signing up to a list of beliefs or rules of behaviour. These things are what many of our friends and colleagues think Christianity is. They think it's a set of beliefs, rules of behaviour, an invitation to join a fairly narrow-minded religious social club. Philip's instinct is that Nathaniel simply has to come and meet Jesus himself. And we must do the same because our calling is to introduce our friends to a person, the person of Jesus. He who is alive and real, who speaks and changes lives. Someone we ourselves have encountered and been transformed by. The one who is the fulfilment of all the promises of God the Father. So Philip says to his friend, come and see, meet this Jesus for yourself. When Nathaniel meets Jesus, it's a moment of supernatural revelation for him. It's a great reminder that we can play our part in pointing people to Jesus, but it's the Holy Spirit who does the miracle of grace. And Nathaniel, with most of his questions completely unanswered, says, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. There have been many, many hardships and struggles of this pandemic 
deep loss, devastating bereavement and trauma. It's been a profoundly painful time in our parishes and in our churches. But at that same time, the story of the church is also one of this being a season of fruitful evangelism. The pandemic might have stopped churches meeting physically, but it's not stopped new people meeting Jesus and joining his family. There's churches where many people have come to faith through online Alpha or Christianity Explored. There's book groups where people have invited their neighbours to discuss faith online. There's all manner of community outreach, ministries of serving people, feeding and clothing people, offering help with debt and unemployment and loneliness. Where even in a time of pandemic, we've had opportunities not just to bless others with material provision, but also God has opened up conversations that have led people into faith in Jesus. So can I encourage you this morning to see in this scripture the grace and authority with which Jesus calls people to himself. May you each be reminded of your first love, that first eureka moment of discovering the Jesus who changes everything. And be inspired by the simplicity of our role, each one of us as evangelists in the kingdom of God. Would you pray that this week you'd have an opportunity to say to someone else, come and see, come and explore Jesus for yourself and make up your own mind. And with that opportunity, pray for God to give you the courage that when the moment arrives, you take that opportunity up to invite them. For many of us, that will be a scary prayer to pray, but let's pray it anyway. Amen. Let us pray to God, who alone makes us dwell in safety. Hear us now as we pray for the church and the world. Help us to feel the joy as we recognise that we now know you, Lord, and are prepared to shine as your light in the world. First, let us pray for our town, our community, for all the vulnerable and elderly who are at such great risk at this time. We pray for our families and friends and pray we may enjoy time together soon. We pray for the lovely county we live in, a gift beyond description. We pray for all the frontline workers, the teachers, the medical profession, the mums and dads homeschooling, and we look for a swift and successful outcome so that all of our lives and livelihoods return to full strength soon. Help us to be positive and hopeful. Lord, we pray. Let me shine as your light in the world. We are faced by troubled times across the Atlantic. Many values are being questioned, and there are difficult times ahead for many. Lord, Help us to be firm and steadfast in our resolve not to fall into despair, but to maintain the principles of life that you have taught us. All mankind is made in your image. We all shine with God's love. Help us to remain confident in the goodness of your creation and help us show love in our hearts to all people, however difficult. Lord, we pray, let me shine as your light in the world. We thank you, Lord, for teaching, for the word you have given us and the understanding of your purpose in the world. We pray for all who help us to understand that message, who support us when we feel doubt and uncertainty. We pray for all people of God who show your children the path to your glory. We pray especially for the work of your church here in Britain, in West Sussex, and especially our charity of the week, the Chichester Diocese. May we be loving and caring in our support of all our ministers, clergy and laity as they strive to build our community in faith together. Let us be a light to the world. Lord, we pray, let me shine as your light in the world. Lord, help us to foster your love around us. There are so many areas of strife and chaos, it is difficult to enumerate them. But we pray fervently for all those caught up in war, suffering fear and depression, experiencing the effects of hatred and intolerance. Look on all those people in power who have the means to bring peace, reconciliation, understanding and tolerance to our planet to hear your voice of love and care. May they work to stop injustice, greed and self-aggrandizement. 
Show your light to those tortured people who feel the only way to achieve their ends is by violence and death. That there is another way, your way of love and hope. Help us not to encourage intolerance by prejudice and distrust, but instead to shine as your light in the world. Lord, we pray, let me shine as your light in the world. Lord, we pray for all who suffer from illness of body, mind or spirit, all those who live in fear and pain, all who have suffered loss. We pray for those people known to us who are struggling at this moment to see your light. Let us show them your light of love. Be open to caring and giving of that love. Lord, we pray, let me shine as your light in the world. Lord, we remember those in our prayers who are sick. Sheila, Luca, Lance, Ruth, Jeremy, James, Geraldine, Christine Graves, Joe Scholes, Tracy, Jennifer, John, Lizzie and Ian. Lord, we think of those who have died recently. Marna, Valerie Boys, Rodney Orcott. And those whose memory lingers in our hearts. Audrey Milne, David William Ware, Barbara Eveline Randall, Patricia Margaret Amos, Barbara Johnston. We are confident in the knowledge of their peace in your eternal light. Lord, we pray, let me shine as your light in the world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We're now going to sing an offertory hymn. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks, for you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is to come. Your love is made visible in Jesus Christ. You bring home to the lost, restore the sinner, and give dignity to the despised. In the face of Jesus Christ, your light shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth, gathering into one a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so far, the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the Apostles and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed body of Christ. Let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Can I just bring to your attention before the final blessing the various items on the pew sheet which would have been emailed to you? And also just to say that some of you may be joining us um, online for worship and if you're not on our database then you won't get the uh, pew sheet. If you want it then please send an email to our administrator and we can add you to our database and make sure that you are included in our weekly mailing. Um, so please uh, do keep safe and well during this particular um, phase of this pandemic which we are all dealing with. As you know, I'm still offering a nine o'clock service on a Sunday morning for those of you who wish to make your communion in person. It is a said service and I will continue, continue to do so all the time that the government enable us to do that. However, watch this space because no doubt things might change yet again. However, the important thing is that we all keep safe and well. And please be um, assured that I am praying for you all here at the church. So let us ask for God's blessing upon us. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.
Gott anointed, great David's greater son. Hell in the time appointed, his reign on earth begun. He comes to break oppression, to set the captive free. To take away transgression and rule in equity. He comes with succor speedy to those who suffer wrong. To help the poor and needy, and bid the weak be strong. To give them songs for sighing, their darkness turn to light. Whose souls condemned and dying were precious in his sight. He shall come down like showers upon the fruitful earth, and love, joy, hope like flowers spring in his path to birth. Before him on the mountains shall peace the herald go. And righteousness in fountains from hill to valley flow. Kings shall bow down before him and gold and incense bring. All nations shall adore him. His praise all people sing. To him shall prayer unceasing and daily vows ascend. His kingdom still increasing, a kingdom without end.